Welcome to another episode of the Tech Transfer Podcast. I'm Dave Brown. I'm here with Ian Nelson, who's the Vice President of Marketing for Mailbox Power. Uh, Ian, could you introduce yourself? On, on LinkedIn, it says that you're a lead magnet specialist. So why yes. else lead magnets, what they are, and how we should be using them? Absolutely. So uh, many of you at this point in time are familiar with the popular saying, people do business with those that they know, like, and trust, right? But have you ever heard of the inverse of this saying? Those that do business with you need to trust you first. Now, that's obvious, right? <laughs> uh, but a lot of the times, especially nowadays uh, online, we're getting bombarded by social media. We're getting bombarded by messages, uh, sales pitches, by like consumerism, all sorts of things that are trying to grab our attention that as a result, so many of us online are becoming more numb. A lot of uh, a lot of users, a lot of audiences, their guards are up because they've seen so many things. Um, a lead magnet, the whole point of a lead magnet is to offer something that is free in exchange for an audience's trust. And or it's something that gets the conversation started. It's something that um, that you can essentially uh, leverage and promote up front uh, to start get it, yeah, grabbing the attention of your audience. And um, with Mailbox Power, uh, one of my roles as VP is um, I'm supposed to fill our sales calendar with as many of our potential and ideal prospects as possible. And lead magnets, these free offers, are how I get us in front of our audience and grab their attention uh, to that book with us, yeah. So let me make sure I understand if what I think lead magnet, I think sometimes on LinkedIn, someone might say, download my free ebook about whatever, about marketing. And then yes. you go to download it, just you have to give them your email address that you get the free thing. And so yeah. now you're on their list. That's that's basically how it works, right? Yes, that is that is a form of lead magnets. Uh, and actually, I'm glad that you brought this up because this is what most businesses think of when they think of lead magnets is let me offer a free PDF, free guide a free uh, course uh, to essentially get your email. And then from there, you're within my funnels and I can start reaching out to you. That's kind of their idea. Build a list. Um, however, uh, something that not many realize is that uh, the lead magnet types that are used to get um, opt-ins are actually very different for the ones that you use to get booked appointments. There's actually two different types. And so the ones that I specialize in for Mailbox Power is the ones that book appointments. Okay, yeah, how do those work? Yeah, all right. Well, the uh, <laughs> the fun piece about them is, uh, have you ever, uh, I mean, just a question for you. Uh, I, I'm assuming you've heard of Alex Hermosa, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever read 100 million offers or 100 million leads? You know, I've read at least part of it. He was just suddenly everywhere online, right? Every yes, he is, because he's incredible. And yeah, he is great, great though, yeah. So I'm going to take some pieces out of this uh, this book. And for those listening who have ever followed along those books, this should sound familiar. So um, in order to get individuals to book an appointment with you, the thing that you're offering must be worth their time. And then that, that obviously sounds like, oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> of yeah. course it's worth my time. But in exchange, the thing that you give, it it has to generate enough curiosity for them to want to actually book a call with you. So, for example, in the book 100 Million Offers, there's a uh, an, an equation. I'm not going to cite the whole equation, but the summary of that equation is you need to create a Grand Slam offer. Something that sounds, or no, actually, no, sorry. It's something that is so good, your audience would feel stupid saying no to. Okay. And a lot of businesses that uh, that I have seen that are offering things and their lead magnets are not converting, it's mm -hmm. because their audiences are saying no to it. Yeah. Uh, it's because it's something that they see and they're like, okay, that's all, that's all right. Um, and so to... Uh, to retranslate that phrase of I need to offer something that sounds too good to be true, you need to offer yeah, actually that's that's what I just said. I, I I broke my own punchline. You need to offer something that is 
and sounds almost too good to be true. Well, it, what's a good what's a good example? Like what would so? That? Yeah, with Mailbox Power, this is actually what we do. So, um, one aspect of our business, uh, one of the industries that we're really big in, is insurance. A lot of insurance agents leverage postcard marketing and direct mail uh, to target specific types of uh, individuals. And so they use these types of uh, they use postcards consistently in their their uh, their forms of marketing to stay in touch, prospect and other aspects. So knowing that one of the things that we offer at Mailbox Power is unlimited free postcards, just pay postage to actually market your business. And so our lead magnet is something along the lines of insurance agents want to leverage unlimited free postcards to your uh, to market your business, book a call with them. Now, the interesting thing about this is this is a very powerful offer that we have tested and proven and found. Mm-hmm. And it is it is almost so good that this audience actually does ask us all the time, what's the cap? Yeah. Now, right. Here's the thing about these types of lead magnets. You want them to ask what's the cap? Because if they ask that question, then you've got their attention. And maybe, go ahead. Well, well, let me work backwards from that a little bit because the other day I was explaining to a classroom full of BOU students how we do deals because we, we structure deals very favorably for student startup companies. Mm-hmm. So they're explaining, look, you don't pay anything and you do this and that. And um, a couple of masks, okay, so what's the catch? And so for me, I was like, oh, maybe this is the wrong way to explain it. But I think what you're saying is, no, that's the right way to explain it. What it is. It. That is, because here's the thing. Traffic oftentimes isn't free. (laughs) It's either paid with by your money or your time. And so as a result, you need something strong to pull them in. I would rather have a conversation where my prospect asks what's the catch than to not have a conversation at all. And so that's the take that we go with. Now, another uh, an immediate objection that I oftentimes get when I start teaching this is, well, Ian, like, if you're offering too good to be true, that's dishonest. And it's only dishonest if you do not own that there is a cap. And that's the key piece that differentiates uh, from bait and switch and this particular tactic is we fully own the value that we provide. We know. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. So say you're talking to an insurance company and you say, look, we're going to do the unlimited postcards for you. You just pay for postage. And they'd say, everyone else charges us. So what's the catch here? That yes, yeah. say what's next for them. Yeah. And for us, we say what's next is like, look, we are a business <laughs> that helps in a specific outcome. And the outcome in our case is that we help insurance agents directly reach their audience and not have to handle any of the manual hassle of printing, mailing, <laughs> licking envelopes or other any, uh, well, obviously they don't have to lick envelopes for postcards, but All of the manual hassle piece is covered by our monthly membership fee. And so our goal as a company is to grow our memberships and we fully own it. So when they talk on and they say, okay, what is the catch? We let them know, yes, there is a catch. We have a membership fee. And the reason why we have a membership fee is because all of the results and the value that we give our audience. In fact, here are some amazing case studies that we have of all the individuals that have used our platform and essentially allowed uh, found success because of it and the thing that they were leverage. So then they're re- uh, uh, immediately going to do math in their head and say, well, okay, there's this membership fee of X dollars, but I think I'll send out this many pieces. So it's yep. still better than the competitors, that sort of thing, right? Yes. Yes. And we expect objection. That's the thing. A lot of the times, a lot of the aspect of sales is understanding what our audience's objections are and being able to have the answers and know them so well that we can we can answer them any time that they come. And so, yes, that's part of the sales process. And as a result, we are consistently booked. Like right now, Dave, we're on average. And just from, uh, we've got a combination. We've got, uh, we've got paid ads as form of traffic. We also have organic just from our brand and those that have known us. And we've got affiliates. And as a result, we, on average, are booking around 160 uh, appointments per month uh, and about 40, yeah, 40 to anywhere from 40 to 80 appointments per week. Uh, but on average, it's around 160. And we're, our sales calendar 
we are so full. <laughs> and then I'm coming mostly from it. Like, is your marketing, are you mailing postcards too? Are you doing direct mail or is that mostly online marketing? It's both. It's a mixture of both. And a lot of the times um, we like some of the crazy things that we have uh, in Mailbox Power, we actually have a, a, a list builder tool that allows us to pull lists of uh, different kinds of individuals, um, whether it be like uh, certain kinds of demographics like homeowners or um, or uh, uh, age or credit score or ethnicities. It's kind of really interesting how it's set up and it uh, it only gives us their addresses for now. Uh, and as a result, uh, we can pull lists and then create specific campaigns for those people. And what we've seen is that um, right now, direct mail has a very unique space, especially uh, with how many emails and texts and uh, things that we get bombarded with every day. A personalized mail, uh, so like a personalized postcard, someone something that is addressed to the person directly, uh, or you send something lumpy in the mail or a package. Packages are so good. And like, packages always get opened. Uh, and um, as a result, our software can automatically, um, how do I say, it can automatically personalize anything that you send to any list. So um, a lot of our users that are currently using Mailbox Power for prospecting, uh, they do it with that. So that they tailor a, a, a an automated sequence like they would for an email. But with direct mail instead. And it's incredible. This is especially powerful in a lot of the home service, home service type industries. So, yeah. so Ben, a couple of questions that raises, and I, I think that's fantastic. I'm, I'm kind of driving to direct mail because it feels like a throwback technology, but yeah. people moved on from something that was actually really valuable. And yeah. like, because there was something shinier, online marketing, right? Yeah. So I've, I've actually experimented with it a little bit with certain types of BCs. All sent um, um, direct mail like packets of our, our sell sheets for our technology. So one page summaries of technology because we're licensing those, right? Right. Yeah. And to your point, those are kind of packages. I think they always get opened. If I ask people, they'll say just send it to me digitally. But my instinct is it'll get open more and sit around and be looked at a few more times if it's physical, right? Yes. Yes. No. Mm -hmm. And that is true, especially if it has their name on it. They're much more likely to actually open it or read it. If it has their name in big, bold letters, especially. Yeah. And to your point, if you get something, it is so easy to not open an email. Like I have my filters on Gmail. I don't even see most of those emails, right? Yeah. And so, um, but with the physical price, you're going to see it. What about yeah. now you're doing, you're running a service business. So it makes, your funnel makes all kinds of sense to me. But um, what if instead you're setting a product? How do you make that kind of irresistible offer if you just want them to kind of make a one-time purchase? Yes. So- that is a great point. And if I'm going to be completely honest with you, I'm not exactly sure when it comes to products. It fully depends on the price of the product. Because if I was doing e-commerce and I had a low ticket item, it might not make as much sense for me to send a direct mail piece through uh, for uh, essentially getting people to incentivize for a, a product. But here is where we have seen it work. So not on necessarily the prospecting side to cold audiences, but to those that have already purchased a product. So using direct mail to remind them is extremely powerful to buy a new product. So for example, DoorDash uses this all the time. They'll send postcards to those that are frequent users. If any of you have received a postcard with your name on it uh, uh, from DoorDash, it's because you buy from DoorDash a lot and they, 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 you're on their list. Um, other retail brands like uh, Bath & Body Works, for example, will do this. Uh, they'll send coupons and other pieces that are also... Uh, it'll say something along the lines of uh, exclusive discount or something, 20% off for Dave. It'll specifically say the person's name, and that has proven to be very powerful. So I can't promise necessarily direct mail's results because I don't have enough data on the product side for the prospecting to cold audiences. But there is a lot of data to support those that are sending uh, their existing customer base reminders uh, about upcoming sales. Like for example, Black Friday is coming uh, along. Like this is a really good time to remind existing customers that, hey, Black Friday is coming, uh, be aware and also kind of promote it in that sense. Yeah, and I'm thinking for people we interact with, for entrepreneurs, for VC, venture studios, people like that, we could, every time we get X number of new technologies here, we could send out a mailing to them. And I, I have sent out some of these packets 
And uh, let's talk about the price of mailing things too, because um, I can send someone a pretty good looking packet for like maybe two forty five or something like that. And so not very expensive when you're talking about a deal that could be significant. But how does the pricing work out for people? Yeah, it fully depends on what it is that you would like to send. You have control. You have essentially control of the budget. If you only have less than a dollar per person to send, then postcards are honestly going to be your best. Because with postage right now, uh, it changes. I don't necessarily have it right on me, but um, it's going to be under, it's going to be around 50 cents to send a small postcard and around 70 to 80 cents to send a, a larger postcard. Um, and if you're trying to really impress someone, uh, you're looking more, uh, so, so for example, one of, for our data, we actually have a user right now who sends, they only send, uh, personalized brownies. All they do is that we have uh, one of our, one of our gifts. That's incredible. Um, you can, it's a two pack of brownies that you can essentially customize anything on that, uh, oh, that's cool. or that comes with it. And, um, uh, there, this one company spends almost 40,000 a year on just <laughs> and I'm looking for I'm looking for thank you things to send people who appear on our podcast. So you might get your own brownies here, Ian. Because... Oh, perfect! <laughs> that sounds wonderful to me. They're delicious. And um, but yes, it's it's those types of things. And we can go anywhere from yeah cents to when it comes to postcards to like around on average, if you're sending a, bra- a, pa- a two pack of brownies with shipping included, it's around ten to eleven dollars. Kind of what you should be yeah. expecting. Uh, and then uh, we also offer more luxury items. So, for example, uh, laser engraved, um, uh, laser engraved uh, wood or uh, yeah. uh, wallets, uh, golf balls, like all co- all sorts of crazy customizable things. Mugs are another big one. We also offer like premium packages and things like that. So, if you want to send something that really wows someone and arrives at their doorstep. Uh, there's an, a lot of amazing things that you can do. It's really customizable. So, but, so walk me through this reasoning. Like, um, tell me if I'm thinking about this wrong, but on Google AdSense or AdWords, if people are advertising online, there are some keywords like, I don't know, it used to be like mesothelioma or things like that, where it would be like a $75 keyword. People were paying for every click, like $75 or, or more. Um, shouldn't they do direct mail instead? I would never say like, so that's an excellent question. Here's here's what I'll I'll, I'll share about this. Um, in an ideal world, if you have the budget, you should do all of them. <laughs> if you can, the more the more tracker that you you can do, the better. But it really depends on your demographic. If you have a demographic that likes direct mail, that likes being able to uh, see it, uh, and uh, frequently visits their mailbox, so older demographics oftentimes will really enjoy direct mail. I 100% say that, yeah, you should absolutely leverage direct mail. And um, if you've got something that is, so for example, uh, definitely service-based businesses, local-based businesses, um, and companies that are, um, or trying to stay top of mind with their audiences, that's where direct mail shines. Um, and that's And that's like my, my recommendation because let's, because here's the thing, direct mail is powerful. It has limitations. And so as a result, it's best to, it's best to use it in the markets that it's strongest in. Um, you could send like one of the limitations is you have to get people to your digital content. You can't send them as much stuff, but you can send them a postcard with a QR code on it, right? And then hopefully act the right and website. What's even crazier about it is we have uh, in our software something called dynamic QR codes, which means that our software will automatically assign a QR code that's unique to every recipient. So let's say, Dave, you're on my list that I send you, my prospecting list, and yeah. you scan my QR code. Our system will let us, uh, it'll let me know that Dave at 123 Main Street just scanned my code. And now I can launch other CRM, uh, sorry, other automations that are connected through my CRM. Uh, and I can do all sorts of other aspects. I can say Dave is now a higher quality lead uh, that has shown interest. And from there, I can do additional actions. It's, yeah. It, well, it's, what kind of, like, I know it's going to vary, but what kind of, of scan rate would you expect? Like, say you mail postcards with QR codes um, to people you don't have a relationship already. What would be a yeah. good click rate? Fully depends on how uh, how strong the offer is itself. Sure. Uh, but on average, you're looking around like 5% is safe. Uh, we've seen higher when uh, the offer is almost is a grand slam offer, 
but a lot of the times you're looking around five percent. That's okay. that's the safest to say. That that's pretty great though. You can do something with that. Yeah. Okay. Here's one other advantage I see, and uh, talk me through this one a little bit. You know, some people new startups. So we have new startups coming out, student startups, people who license from us, and so on. Sometimes to get a hold in the market, they'll want to scrape email addresses online and email people, prospect that way. I always worry, you know, there's the can spam act. There are some laws about spamming people that I would worry about running a foul of, but um, much less so for physical mail, right? Correct. No, it's true. Like, and in the, a popular saying that we say uh, in, our, in our team is uh, you can opt out of emails and texts, but you can't opt out of a postcard. Right. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, you could stay top of mind for a very long time. And in truth, that's one of the most powerful advantages that direct mail has is that over time, as you send mail and become known in your area, you will become known, especially since it's it's almost, uh, it, it's amazing how you can form an experience with this, being with direct mail. An experience is a little different from, from emails because emails are quick. And as a result, right, they can be ignored. Just look at your promotions tab and just see how many emails are stuck in there of all the people you've opted into. Uh, but with direct mail, um, so much of our mail right now, when you open it, it's bill, bill, bill. Oh, new credit card offer, new thing. Oh, what's this? A package? Or uh, it says something, Dave, it's directly for Dave and grabbing your attention. You can play around with it in so many ways. And it, it's, 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 it's been a medium that's been hard to leverage for a long time. But at Mailbox Power, we're doing everything we can to make it as easy as email or text. And obviously, there's little pieces in that, but we've done the hard work of automating it for you so you don't have to worry about it. Fantastic. For, um, for a new startup company or even like for a tech transfer office, for people trying to reach a lot of people, I just see direct mail is probably an untapped resource for a lot it of people. So, it yeah, it is. You also, though, have, I, I mean, I think I connected with you uh, first on LinkedIn. So you've done a great job online, too. What's um what's kind of your philosophy towards LinkedIn and promoting yourself online? Well, when it comes to LinkedIn, it's one of those things where it's I went on LinkedIn originally as a as as you saw from one of my posts as a test. My goal originally was to leverage it as a way to connect with people, but also to create systems for my team at Mailbox Power. Uh, a lot of what I do with uh, with lead magnets. It's uh, there's a lot of little steps and pieces. And so I started posting on it purely almost as like a journal uh, to essentially create these systems that I could essentially refer to for my marketing team. And so that way, when I referred to like, hey, we need to build a lead magnet for Mailbox Power in this way, they would then be able to then just refer to the source that I, I had. And little did I realize that, oh, what I was creating was actually valuable to others as well. And so they started going through. Now, the power of LinkedIn, Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, all these social media platforms, they're long-term strategies. You're looking at them as ways to be able to get your name out there and to just uh, essentially the more that you show up, the more likely that opportunities are going to open. And so for me, as I'm posting on LinkedIn, posting on Facebook and other platforms, I'm looking to essentially serve. And as a result, people come to me asking about mailbox power. And I'm not necessarily trying to sell them, oh, this is the, you know, the best program in the world and other things like that. I'm showcasing some of the cool things that they can do with either lead magnets, direct mail, and uh, <laughs> client gifting, other aspects uh, uh, of marketing. And that's how I, I'm here to serve. That's why I'm on LinkedIn. That's why I'm on Facebook. That's why I'm on these other platforms. It's just... I'm here to serve, and as a result, people seem to like it. <laughs> so they're coming to they, they're coming to talk to me, and I, I always appreciate it. Yeah, that's great. I have the we've had the same experience with tech transfer. We're just kind of putting ourselves out there on different platforms, and it pays off. One yeah. thing, though, um, here's one more argument in favor of direct mail. I think is platforms are are risky. Like a a platform can shut you down at any time. It's a little bit um, arbitrary what social media does sometimes, and uh, so direct mail also is part of the philosophy, I think, of building your list and having that be your valuable asset because no one can take that away, right? Yes. No, it is true. And as a result, like we've talked before, it's it's harder to uh, avoid because, and that's something that's important to know, is direct mail uh, really, uh, it can be a powerful long-term tool. 
the fact that they can't necessarily ignore you. They have to physically see your message before they decide to throw in the trash or put it on their fridge. And so as a result, uh, the, the more that you do it, the more that they're going to recognize you. And you have a very powerful audience because think about it. How many, uh, how many messages are you competing with in the inbox? <laughs> hundreds, hundreds. And on social media, you're competing with so many different uh, people or competitors or other businesses. But when you think about the mailbox, like on average, maybe 10 to 15 or more, but yeah. 10 to 15 uh, in, comp- in a week in comparison to 10 to 15 in like 10 minutes. On and off, online. And to your point, I think it's changed where email always feels like a chore to me now. It wasn't always that way. Like 30 years ago, it wasn't that way, but it is now. But the mailbox has gone from a little bit of a chore to uh, maybe a little Christmassy. Like maybe there'll be something. It is. It is. We have a common uh, a, a meme or a joke on our on our <laughs> that we have hung up on the wall where um, the first panel says uh, like uh, tons of letters and then. It was back then when they got an email and they, the email was novel. So it's like, oh my God, email. Yeah. Then on the bottom panel, it shows someone with 227 unread messages. And then it shows someone with the letter and they're like, oh my gosh, someone wrote the letter. And yeah, that's reality. We just got yeah. right where we're at, you know? And um, yeah. so, Ian, this is super interesting. We're already short on time. But um, so, in these last few minutes, what are some really smart things you've seen people do? You talked about Uber Eats. That's a great strategy, what they're doing. Where's some other clever things people do? Honestly, it's making them your your audience feel special. Like one thing that's really powerful, if you want people to close, if you want to close more deals and to earn that trust, kind of like how I talked about in the beginning, make them feel special. Send them something that's just different than what they're normally expecting. Because obviously, a lot of people when they thank them, they say a set, they send a thank you uh, text, they send a uh, something, um, the, a, an email. But if you were to send them like a gift, like a pack of brownies. Or just saw like like a mug with their with their name on it, or your name on it, or some uh, like personalized message, something like that. You'll be unforgettable. And the more uh, the more that you're remembered, the more likely that someone is going to stick with you. They're going to refer you, and uh, people relationships. That's that's what business is about. And so the more that you make people feel special, uh, the more that they're going to stick with you. So that's that's my last little uh, tidbit. Absolutely. That's fantastic advice. Thanks, Ian. Thanks for sharing all the kind of the inside scoop here. Um, how did, how can people get a hold of you? I assume, how do they get to Mailbox Power's website and how do they find you? Yeah, so it's just go.mailboxpower.com. Uh, if they want to reach out to me personally, it's just ian at mailboxpower.com. And I'm always uh, happy to talk about marketing uh, as well as direct mail and uh, uh, client relationships. Okay, great. I know they can find you on LinkedIn too. So yeah. Uh, thanks so much for connecting in. It's great to meet you and I uh, really appreciate your conversation. Thanks.